bath time. I'm going to stand it up on end a little bit so it can kind of drain out the back there though. Let's see if I can catch that front tire without pinching the body. Gotta choke up on it. Never took my ratchet off on any. That'll work pretty good. Bring you back when I'm done. That's a little bit better. Definitely uh, cleaner than it was before. You could actually see the color of the fiberglass where before it was just all impregnated oil. So now that we can do our, some welding without worrying about spontaneously exploding. I'm right, gonna let this down. I'm gonna go have breakfast and uh, let it dry out and we'll get back to it. Right, so it's like the next day. I've had a little chance to kind of uh, ponder on this thing. And sometimes that's a good thing to do. You know, it's kind of, sort of rushing to what you want to build. Allow your mind to think of different combinations, a way to kind of put things together. <clears throat> so that's what has happened. Everything's still sitting in a pile over there that I took out of it. And uh, it's dried up fairly well up top. There's about an inch of water, half inch of water on each side. He's got to go pull that out of there. Anyway, so I decided to kind of work it backwards and go from the pre-existing stuff to where the engine is going to go be and having said that i want to put stuff in more permanently so i can get a exact on um, where stuff would need to go and we can start making stuff so to go ahead with that i'm going to grab the jack shaft that's sitting under the bench stool we'll get that back installed get the chains back on and get the brake drum hooked up get it kind of dialed in right to where it needs to be and then i'll know more where i start to need to build backwards for the uh transplant. Sound like a plan? All right, let's get on it. It's a lot easier to put back together when you know how it comes apart. We got that guy in there. That's the brake lever going to the pedal. It's got a con rod on this side to adjust the tension of the, of the chain, which you'll probably go a hair tighter on. You rotate this guy and then you drop a pin down in there and that locks it from unrotating itself again. And then underneath right there, there's another adjustment I came through this side with a screwdriver and that uh, works this side of it and then of course it went up to the engine brake lever and that was the shift lever uh, I'm not gonna bolt the floor back in yet I know I got to take it back down to that step I want to make a big stainless plate for underneath to help support the uh, the cradle a little bit better and another thing I got to kind of keep in mind too is you want to make sure whatever direction the energy is pulling from that it is supported so you know for instance on this system right here so this shaft is being torqued up by the engine driving that or when you're braking there's gonna be a lot of stress between this sprocket and this sprocket wanting to pull together either one on one side or the other so they put a con rod right in a direct line um, with the axle so it just kind of cancels each other out there's no it's not trying to pull the axle this way and it's not trying to pull the the shaft that way well you have to keep that in mind at the same token when we build whatever we were going to build here that we do the same thing that everything is kind of supported in that direction or beefy where it's mounted to help 
uh, counteract that. So that's back in there. I figure we go and take the engine. We'll drop it back in. And then maybe stare at it for a little bit more. We could probably get rid of that shifter rod altogether. Get it out of our way. We can get rid of the throttle cable. We can get rid of that whole box uh, set up right there. I already scraped off most of the foam for where it drew in the air. What else do we got? That is... What was that? Choke? Either throttle or choke. I'm going to go with choke because there's a throttle. Alright, I'm going to get the motor. Pop it in. You sure you don't want to just get rid of reverse? You make it so easy. So I'm still trying to think whether it's a better spent use of time trying to run a chain to the gearbox. I should probably get the gearbox over here. So this is what contains... Watch it. Where'd it go? Remind me, it's under that bench somewhere. Bet you I see that comment a couple times. We want. So you want to go from. We need to get to that sprocket to either this shaft or this shaft. And then back to this one. So we would have to. run this one down to the bottom and then this one to the engine but the engine has to go over several inches and when that can, is going to go over it's going to go up because the clutch is in the way the body and the bell housing and the clutch is right against the the tunnel that we got it sitting there. Not that that's that big of a deal to overcome, but I'm trying to keep it as low as possible. Do you think it would be worth it to try to see if we can get the gearbox with this wheel on it mounted to the back of the engine? Do you think that would be a better alternative than trying to mount that? Mount a chain to a chain to the gearbox and then from the gearbox back to there. I think one benefit that we will get is that the alignment, after all said and done, the alignment between these two will be pretty good. I'm no better off than I was yesterday when I was thinking about this. <laughs> uh, if we flip it around again, I'm going to just flip it around just to look at it. I'm a firm believer in trying things different ways to see. Sometimes you see things that you don't normally see. Muffin's going to be in the way. Yeah. I am not even going to get to the top. could sit above that with the cover on it the air would get drawn in just fine but we would have to come back and come across get back to here or is there a way that this sprocket can be added to this side would I be able to because the brake drum can slide over right does that really matter let's think about this for a minute too if I put that sprocket took it off was able to create gap in between here get the other sprocket going down are those chains gonna be spinning the wrong well it won't be spinning the wrong direction because I have forward and reverse it doesn't matter what way it's spinning forward can be reverse and reverse can be forward right if the transmission is right there and right there actually we could take the transmission and spin it around but here about that spin it around this way hit the starter 
we can spin it around this way. Can we spin it around this way? Have it up here. The gearbox here. Well, the gearbox would be right here. And that was the case. See, so we had that floating in the air like that. Actually, it wouldn't be, it would be. So the clutch, that right there, would be on this shaft right here, and then we have the output coming down. You know, where's the drain plug? The drain plug needs to go that way. So that would be that, right about there. And that chain is going to be way too drawn in. Bet that shaft wasn't longer, it would fix it. If I just come through the, the other way into the into this mount that is in here. Actually, it's not that one, it's that one. I keep saying the wrong one. I gotta take it back out, look at it. Alright, so I've been staring at it for about 10 minutes. And, uh, I think we're gonna go reverse ourselves again and see if we can get this back tucked under here with this clutch on it and then just having that gear go down to the uh, jack shaft it's just just so many components so many links to try to kind of link all together it, it's going to be prone to jumping chains and and trying to adjust one you just one you got to adjust five other uh, places behind it so the more that we can get that minimized the better we are so if we're able to get this say mounted off a bracket coming off the engine in its right spot then all we essentially have to do is loosen the four bolts on the engine to uh, change the uh, get the correct tension on the chain coming out of this down to down to that or across to that or you know so having said that the issues that we're going to run into this does not fit on this it's supposed to but it doesn't so i'm gonna to have to make this shaft get um uh, one open or close we, we got a play to go get that probably on there that should be our first step uh, what else was i just thinking that i forgot fly you know how you catch flies so you got to come up from behind them and grab them and see if i can do it no <laughs> i wrecked the place flies take off they fly backwards not forwards you come up behind them they fly into your hand <laughs> that's too much too much information all right i'm gonna go gather my thoughts and i'll bring you back all right i just need 10 seconds to myself uh so what i want to do is make a bracket that goes from here to here so that later on we could put that on here and the dimension for the tension for this belt is kind of preset it's not like you want to adjust that it's it's set to where it's meant to be so um i want to make a jig up because this thing's going to be floating in air we need to get it exactly that that far apart so won't we make a, uh, a strap or a plate or something that comes from the center of this to the center of that we can kind of bolt up and then we could transfer to this guy for location and then figure it out yeah yeah so we'll own ourselves something together just a piece of uh, it's a racking probably opened up one of the holes and uh, we can go and weld those washers right to that and that will maintain that dimension for us those are fender washers they don't have any slop on the bolt so that should give us a real good center and of course the center of that one's already predetermined but see, that's a tad warm So that is a fixed dimension to attach. That's what we need to shoot for. Get all that crap off of there. Put this back on here and get the gearbox. 
All right, moment of truth. Can we tuck that thing? Down in there. I think we can make it. If I grind that guy away. And the shifter will fit. You can get to the fill plug. It's a little on an angle, but it's not bad. And I don't... I guess we just position the motor above that sprocket going down to the one down below. I think we're going to have to weld or uh, bolt on a, a sprocket onto the side of that jack shaft. We'll leave that original sprocket there and we'll scab off a, hot, a half inch and we'll put, because um, I don't have a matching set. We'll see. That, that's getting ahead. So I think we could kind of tuck that right in there. The next thing is we've got to get, so we know where that center line needs to be is we need to get this clutch, this rear clutch. Look, at this. Look over here. We need to make that fit onto there. Let me get a caliper out and see how much it is. But I think, um, I don't know if I want to drill that out or... Too bad. It'd be nice to take this apart and chuck it up in the lathe and just kind of, you know, dress it if we can. It's going to be hardened. I wonder if we could put that. <laughs> it's dangerous. We put that in a drill, in a drill press, and we just take the emery and we start working it down until we get to the right size. Uh, that sounds a little sketchy. The only reason I kind of want to go down with that and not change that is because if we have to back up and I go back to that original one, we can... Uh, Do so. If I drill that out, then that's it. Yeah, what do you want to call that? 28, 29? Where'd you go? Let me move to right about there. You. Actually, it's not bad. I think we should be able to be able to get that cleaned up and get that on there. Just a hair. I am going to do just the old polish of the sandpaper and uh, see if we can get that knocked down a little bit. It looks like it's a one or two thou. So I'm starting with the sandpaper, you know, kind of deal. And it was taking forever. Try putting it together uh, in gear so it would have some drag so it wouldn't turn. Not that I can't figure out how not to make it turn, but I think. Probably what I'm going to do is go around again with the flapper wheel. Yeah. And we're just going to clean off the uh, black and then try it again. Alright, so I got knocked that off. Let's see how we make out. Wants to go. I think. Hit it one more time with the Sharpie, knock it off, hit, come back with the Emery, polish it. I think we got it. See how that does for us. Okay. 
That's where we're gonna need to be. I should probably assemble. Hold on. I'm gonna block it up on some wood, uh, assemble the front, and then we'll see how we look this way. All right, so I got a couple of table jacks out there so you can kind of screw around to the height of things. And what I did when I put the front clutch in, they come with shims that you can kind of move the thing outward if, you, if need be. And so I was trying to hope I can kick everything over so that that would put the sprocket more over this way to catch the um, bottom one that is on there. But it makes the gearbox part of it start lining up with that part of the case. It can't tuck in like it did. It pretty much hits. You can get close, but you can see how much of an angle it's still on. And it just kind of smashes into that, that drain plug right there. So it's close. Uh, I say we take that front one back out of there and we just try dropping it in its place again. And then maybe we'll kind of make up some kind of temporary bracketry to it and then we'll drop it back into machine again the, the way I'm thinking right now. You see the offset that's under there? So let's go try that. Let's get it back over so that it can kick in where it needs to. We could do a little relief on that case, I'm sure, too. Let's do this without trashing that. Getting closer. All right, so that spacer is out of there and I was able to kick it back and tuck it back underneath the engine again. And I think the only thing that stopped me going, from going forward is the bench. The bench, and I thought there was... Yeah, it's just the bench kind of holding me up. And I could even grind down that plug a little bit. So I'm thinking, now that I disturbed it, Hold on one sec. So I had it better, <laughs> but it will fit into the realm where everything kind of lines up. I'm happy with that. Fairly decent. I should be able to get the shifter on here for the cable. The fill plug's a little on the tight side, but, and again, I think we can might be able to rotate it a little. But I think what we want to do now is just make sure proof of concept that we're going to be able to work with this going down to the uh, jack shaft and that the engine will be in a decent placement when we go and do that. So I think I'm just gonna go and take a washer and stick it under there, find a bolt washer there. We'll, I'll get like a, a bolt or something, weld it, weld it, and I'll do that one or two places just so it, it holds that position and we could drop it down and see what it looks like. How's that for some high-end mounts? All right. Over there, should, for gingerly, be able to kind of make it, yeah, very gingerly, make it over, then we'll drop it back in. We are going in again. I can tell you this setup is lighter than the 90 pounds I took out of here. I wouldn't say with all that far out of the realm, huh? course that can get shortened up just to a bolt that's just whatever hardware I'm laying around so that's stopping it from going that way uh, we could literally cut this sprocket right off of here just use that hub and weld what similar one we want the engine is definitely a much of an angle it would have to come up It'd be nice if I can get this behind that that's gonna be how much room I got. 
I want to say there is four inches. It is going to be tight. It's roughly about four. So let's, what do you want to do? Definitely, yeah, we definitely got to get it this way. Camera's blinking. I changed the battery. I took that muffler off of there. That allowed me to drop it in. The only thing that's holding me up again is that extra long bolt hanging out of the uh, crank up there. I think that'll do it fine. It will tuck behind here. And I'm thinking we could probably use this mount spot to pick up, you know, the engine. It's going to sit higher. I can do this with you guys in there. It'll sit straight up. It'll sit like that. Again, without that bolt hanging off the edge of it. And so we can go flat plate down below like the normal engine would mount. And then we could probably come back to the jack shaft here so that the energy, like we talked about earlier, between the sprocket and this will have something opposing it instead of the chain just trying to pull it together. It'll be literally mounted right next to it for support. I think that should work out pretty good but i think for now what we can do is take it back out of there and make that gearbox um some permanent bracketry going to the engine i think we have enough to move forward with that uh, we have a plan a viable plan and after even more staring at it and uh, kind of lining it up i'm going to lay some flat plate from here to here and clamp them just so that they're on the uh, same playing field but essentially they're right there. I'm trying to think of how I want to go for mounting. And what I think I'm going to do is go from this boss right here, and we're going to catch these two. So we're going to go across from there to these two. We'll make up a bracket that kind of bolts together. I think when this is underneath, we're going to go and catch the two back bolts on something we're going to come up from the bottom of the tub and attach to or block or whatever that avenue is because it has to come up some and then like we talked about we'll come off of this one in the front i think it's this one yeah, this one, this one. i want this one to uh, come up off of the we'll come up off of these so I think that'll work out pretty good so that the engine will be attached in the back by two and then in the front by two and it, and those two will be mated together we can beef it up from there but i think that's a good starting point i think we could put it together uh proof of concept kind of rev it up a little bit watch it see where it's flexing here and there and if we need to beef up stuff we will but that cancels out like i said so that'll cancel out the pull from this chain to this sprocket by you know supporting it almost in a straight line and then we have the same for the energy trying to pull these two together is we'll have it blocked here. We'll come up. I think we're going to come off of that boss and that boss. We're going to come back. Maybe we'll grab this one also. And so that'll be there. And, and then going back to the, uh, going back to the jack shaft either here or here so i th say we start with this one we'll, we'll fabricate that guy out make some plates drill some holes do some do the same for some drops we'll figure out where it's going to go together nice and straight tacky tacky take apart hold it up good and uh, we'll bolt that one together solid then we can start knocking some of these off of the top here we'll get that one squared away and so on you know, i'm not showing you much of the fabrication part of it but i i gotta kind of keep it going you know um so piece of angle cut measured bent uh fit and i think we're going to keep it as simple as possible and strong as possible so i think we're going to take another piece we'll slice it the width of that and we'll make for that bottom bolt that'll go straight in whittle part of that corner of it. anyway so we can get that in there and that'll make plenty of weld surface to get the two of those back together and then on the top one, I gotta knock this slip down a little. We'll do one like that. 
and we'll have that one go across the back. I think that will uh, box that in nice. I agree, maybe. I'd say bolt that together, something like that. That should be just fine. So I'm gonna take those pieces off, throw them in the single blast cabinet, clean them up, and uh, get a couple tacks on them. Tighten everything up, get some tacks on them, take it apart, weld them up solid. There we go. So I'm not gonna squeeze them together. Those are tight and that's tight. I want them to be in their natural state because that's the pr profile we're gonna land on. A little bit of an air gap there. But I can get some tacks on it, on both of them. They can take it apart, weld it all back together, and uh, that should be that one. That's warm. That one's in. Pulley still look decent. I think now we need to go swap over to, what did we say we were going to do? Go from here, we're going to go from this bolt and catch those two top head bolts maybe. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get it back up on the lift over there and set it uh, back up again so that we can look down upon it. Let's see. I'd say we are close. I really even air gap around that front one. We can just put a washer behind this one, kick this one out of here. I should do it for that. All right, so do we want to come from here over? And now we're gonna tweak around this one. We have a, uh, a shifter and the cable bracket goes on there, I think. We'll be fine. That guy. That guy. So that can go like that. And it's going to have the, the shifter. Right, something like that. So if we're down here and we sneak up, we should be pretty good. Should I make a bracket? What if I should make something that comes up like here with angle? And then we go to the angle and to the angle. Nah, that's gonna be in the way. We gotta we gotta keep it. We're probably better off in a straight line anyway. You know, energy wise, the more away from the more pivots you, you put in it, the weaker it gets. I gotta think about that. I think we're just gonna come off try to go straight back there's no hardware I really need to clear under here yeah and there's that one I pretty much took a, a two by quarter inch flat stock put a roll in it and just whittled away where I needed it to fit so that's nice and sturdy now we need to do the same to the other side but the other side has the bracket in the way we have to come from there to there I wonder if we can roll. She stay flat. I should go look at this other bracket because we can come up higher, right? Where is it? There it is. So here's that guy. Yeah. Why do they not line up to the cable though? Right? That should be like like that. Who says we can't shim it? Well, it? Looks like it's almost down all the way. It's not going to go down much further. Is there an offset? No. All right. Let's go with the same thing. We'll come up, and whatever interference is in here, we can just kind of whittle out of the center. The, the hard part's going to be getting the roll. I guess we'll roll it this way, the same as that one. Try to come over the top of this, and we could probably trim some of this away let me hold the, the shift cable yeah let's do that we'll go roll another one this way and start whittling coral bend in there you know hit you in the hit you in the throat let's see
doing so I need to be more. yet I would say it's pretty close I think we are now officially at the point I was hoping to be when they ordered this as a kit and thought it all fit together. So, only two days later, we have what we were looking for. I think that should be just fine. We can get rid of that. Photo reverse. Cord. Neutral. Reverse. Awesome. That little bit of a, the beatings we get that into place and we could even shim that up if we have to a little i think it might be okay even just bolt it right down this can drop down a little bit more so that should be for our shifter for the cable that ought to work nice that seems nice and strong we can beef it up if we have to and you know, we could bridge across and support this upper section some more but the energy is going to be pulling uh, this direction, which is actually kind of good, canceling the energy pulling in that direction. We might cancel each other out some. I think the next step is we should probably drop it back in the buggy and see how we like things now. I don't want to add any more to this stuff because when I come up from that mount, I may be tapping into these, so I don't want to, you know, put something in the way that we can incorporate when we're building the other stuff we got washers there uh, we have on this one there's a washer behind each one of these also just to kind of bridge it out a little and I just stole a little off each one to make them kind of meld together but that is, I think it's pretty stout I don't really think it's gonna move much at all again not done but I like the way it's going not the prettiest thing but uh, definitely Definitely fairly beefy though. Could have went a little thicker on that metal, but oh well. All right, let's go drop it in. It's looking pretty good. Nothing persistence couldn't fix. So we are, we could even catch, there's the, I don't wanna blind you with light too much. Right here is the original boss that the original engine was bolted into. I'll stick you down in there. That guy right there is going to go into that case. I don't know what you got the able, you're able to see, but if I cut the tab off of this side and let it drop in, I can catch that one in its factory spot. And then I think what we can do is just weld up a bracket off of this side, build it up, kick it out a little bit because it's this engine's a little wider than this cradle. That's what I'm saying and if you look at the sprocket alignment you can see that this one's out that way a little further from this one and that's good that's what I want because I'm going to take this sprocket we're gonna cut it down use it as a hub and I, I want to bolt other sprockets to it so that I can I don't know what ratio I'm gonna need so I want this to be you know kind of the main area I can play with the adjustment so um, that's just it. We'll, we'll cut this down. We'll drill it for four bolts or five bolts or what three, whatever I got for sprockets, and um, we'll do our best to mock that up. So when we bolt it to the end of this flange, it's essentially about one tooth over. That might work out just fine. It's got plenty of room around it. Put your hand all the way around. 
I got it sitting on that little jack down below the little scissor jack I have. A little, it's nice for, uh, I, guess you, I guess you threw the belt down there. It's nice for tweaking this kind of thing. Uh, getting the clutch off is going to be a little bit of a, um, the belt off rather, a little bit of a pain. I won't be able to pull, have to pull the motor, but we can cut this. It's, this is just the enclosure for the, to suck the air from the front. So it can be played with if we have to, but we'll get to that when we need to. I like it though. I think uh, we're almost there as far as uh, the main part of the drivetrain, not all, almost there, but figuring out how to power this thing is hope. <laughs> all right. So I think I'm going to go wrap her up guys. Thank yous. I think on our next one, we're going to start making the uh, base plate up to attach to the engine and uh, change out our chain setup so that we can finish you know, power to wheels. I like it though. The center, the center is nice. Fan. Um, plenty of room for the fan shroud to go on here. We could tap air maybe off of somewhere else. Or I may even be able to try and run a vent tube under the engine. Is there space under there? Up and around to the intake of it we'll worry about the, or where the jack is now it's a fairly large opening under there what do you think think she'll go I like it and it's simple too to fix it later on will be all stuff that's easy to get all right guys we're gonna go wrap her up there's a mess almost wrap her up. I'm gonna go clean that stuff up until the next one, hopefully we get to uh, fire her up and watch the wheels spin. Until right. then, later. <laughs>